So Gary, we're talking about the uh, delayed COCA operations and reliability class. Um, who should attend that class? I think uh, the waterfront of people should. Area managers, supervisors, superintendents, shift supers, anybody that's new to the unit and needs to find out about the fundamentals so they can hit the, uh, hit the pavement running, so to speak. Um, new process engineers, uh, process engineers that are transferred mm -hmm. as part of their career development. Um, they get to be able to pick up a lot of information without having to ask a lot of questions out in the unit. Uh, you know, it's a little easier to ask me than it is to ask some of their peers and co-workers. I, I could imagine if you're a process engineer and you go out there, you're going to be working with these operators, there's sort of this expectation, well, don't you know? Correct. And if the operator's been there 10 years and the engineer's been there a month, no, I don't. <laughs> That's right. And so it's a great place to pick up on the nomenclature of the unit and some of our bigger problem areas. Um, maintenance uh, benefits a lot because, especially in the fundamentals, uh, not only do I talk about why the unit's there and how it basically operates, but I spend a lot of time in the afternoon of the second day on reliability. Mm -hmm. And it gives them an understanding of what the unit does and why they might have as many mechanical work orders for the unit. And uh, vendors, um, who supply the products and services to the industry, they benefit a lot because they get to hear from a seasoned operator uh, about the unit and get a better understanding of how their product fits into the scheme of things. So if I were a new operator, what would I get out of going to this two-day class? A new operator, seasoned operator, operator with 20 years of experience, uh, you get to pick up a lot because um, we at Coking.com have been to well over 100 delayed cokers worldwide. Uh, we're kind of at the uh, center of the delayed coking industry because of the seminars that we host. So we collect a lot of the best practices and the newest types of technology that's available. And um, of course our mission has always been safety of the people in the field. So what they will get is a different view on what they're doing. And an example was I had a area supervisor. He'd been that area supervisor for 12 years. And the plant was probably a 40 year old uh, four drum coker. And at the end of the class, he'd come up to me very quietly and he goes, you cut from the top down? And I said, uh, pretty much that's the way the industry is designed to cut from the top down. And he says, well, why? And I said, well, if you cut from the bottom up, you get tons of coke caving in and trapping the drill stem and the cutting tool and bending the drill stem. He goes, that's why we have so much trouble with our drill stem. He says, we cut from the bottom up. We always have. So if he's cutting from the bottom up, that means his whole crew is, all his shifts are, so where did he learn to cut from the bottom up? Well, it's culture. It's it's how that plant probably started, and, and uh, nobody went outside the, the company to see how others were doing it. There was quite an emphasis in you know, 40, 50 years ago to not share your secrets. We didn't share safety. We didn't share reliability either. And because of what we do in our business, we've opened the door to that. So we're all more reliable and more safety conscious because we share those items. And the other thing that has happened is Pete teaches Tom, that teaches Sally, that teaches Fred, that teaches Paul, and Paul has the accident. And Paul, that's the only way he's heard to do with the job. And it was wrong through all those people that they didn't have the accident. And there's numerous cases of that. So if, if Pete or none of those guys went to a class like yours, they never had the opportunity to hear that in the industry, it's typical to cut from the top. Correct. So that's just kind of a, a benefit of being at the training is you hear what the right way is, and you also hear from five, 10, 20 others that, well, we do it this way and here's why, or we don't do that and here's why. And you mentioned a good thing about networking. 
in the class, like my last class in Galveston, I think there was eight different refiners in the class, plus two or three vendors, and everybody helps each other. It's part of the networking that uh, happens inside the class and at the seminar. So you get a lot of benefit about what, how do you do it? Really? No, we do it this way. Oh, I never thought of that. Or okay. And it's um, having started the company in 1998 and doing this for almost 20 years now. We've learned a lot from the very beginning that it's a human thing. People interact and telling stories and learning from somebody else is such a vital way. It makes it real, it's tangible. You've been in the line of fire. You've opened a drum. You know how it works. You faced it. So I'm going to listen to you rather than I'm just going to read through a book and believe it as much. That's correct. And you know, a lot of times in trainings, they're so sterile. It's more of a teacher-student relationship where I'm one of you. I'm one of the operators. I'm an operator by heart, a maintenance guy by uh, career. And what I've learned is to be able to go and pass this on to the next generation. And you mentioned something about the book. You know, we have a very unique manual. And a lot of companies have allowed us to use pictures that we've taken while either on equipment audits or cold eye reviews. And um, that's why our book is so full, and it's full of great examples. And it's taken years to put it together to the size it is. Uh, how many pages you printed out? 300 something. 300 and some, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a great picture book of, of the equipment and, and how to do the process. Oh, and it's full color. And so it's a great reference manual. Like You can see it right there, and you can look at your own, or you can explain to somebody else. Correct. So, why would a, uh, a supervisor or a manager want to send somebody to your coking fundamentals class? Uh, that's a great question and um, that's the target audience we try to get to because the operations people, the uh, uh, process engineer are enthusiastic about coming to the seminar but they have to convince their manager. Yeah. And so the managers that uh, have been very progressive in the industry, uh, I find, has given um, a list of things that, well, here's what we have problems with, here's our bad actors. When you go to the training and seminar, see if you can find answers for these. And one of our uh, clients, a uh, very large uh, coking complex, when his people came to the uh, training or the conference, they were to come up with the nuggets of information that were valuable, pass it to the other shifts, to the whole organization inside the coker, and include it in the training manual. So these lessons learned were um, given to everybody that came through the coker. So back at the plant, back at the refinery, everybody in the coker benefited from this guy or this group going. That's correct. And for the person himself too, you know he's not going to be slouching around at training. He's like, yeah, whatever, falling asleep. Because when he gets back to the coker and he's got to read from his notes and train everybody else, you know, he's going to pay attention. Don't worry, Paul. In my class, nobody falls asleep. Well, you have some great exercises and other activities, too. Uh, well, and, and the thing is, I'm talking about the real-life stuff. I'm not talking about theory. This really happens. Yeah. And this is why it happens. Yeah. And that's why the fundamentals class is so great because you get to start off with a great foundation on why the unit's even there. The history of the coker, where it came from, why it's there. And, um, you know, we talk about some of the pitfalls we have in the unit too. Okay, it's like real stuff, real world. Mm -hmm. so real world. Real world, brought to you sure. by Gary Pittman. Oh, well, <laughs> by coking.com and by refining community. And Evan Hyde and all of our instructors. Mm -hmm. yeah. community.